Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to think about the physical intuition behind why the centrifugal force points outwards. Now I did this from a mathematical point of view in my last video. This video is going to be much less mathematical and I just want to think about why we would expect a particle which is just sitting in a rotating frame, why we would expect that particle to be feeling a kind of outwards push. So to illustrate the idea, we're going to consider a scenario which is an object moving in a circle in an inertial frame. Okay, so this could be like a, a planet orbiting a star uh, on a circular orbit, or it could just be something like holding a ball on the end of a string and, and spinning it around. Okay, and so we're going to look at that rotational motion from two different frames, and so we're looking at it on the left, I've shown the full orbit, right, of our our object that we're looking at in an inertial frame, which is going in a circle all the way around. Um, and let's say it's just spinning around with an angular velocity of omega. And then we look at the same thing, but from the perspective of a co-rotating frame, where the object is just sitting there, right? It's not moving. Okay, so I'm going to think about two different ways we can explain why we would expect this object to feel an outwards force in the rotating frame. The first one is just in terms of uh, well, I guess in terms of the actual forces, right? We've got actual forces and then we've got fictitious forces like the centrifugal force. What actual forces do we have acting on our, our object? Well, let's answer that by first thinking about the velocity of the object, right? If it's moving in a circle, its instantaneous velocity at any particular point has to be a tangent to that circle. So if we want to draw on the instantaneous velocity, right, the instantaneous velocity, um, of our object, it's going to be like this. So let me just label that arrow. That is the instantaneous velocity, tangent to the circle. Now, the fact that it's going, you know, as I've drawn it, it's going horizontally at that instant, but it's actually following a circular path, that tells you that there has to be a force acting on the object, right? And if it's moving in a circle with a constant speed, then the force has to change the direction of the velocity, but not its its magnitude. And the only way that can happen is for the force to be perpendicular. And so we can conclude that there must be a force acting perpendicular to the instantaneous velocity uh, in order to keep it in a circular motion, right? And so that just acts along this radial line that I've drawn here. And I guess how you would label it depends a bit on the context, but I'm going to call it T here because I'm imagining it as like the tension in a string if we're, if we're just spinning around a ball on the end of a, a string. Okay, now let's go to the rotating frame, and that tension is a real force, right? If the tension exists in the inertial frame, it has to also exist in the rotating frame, so um, we can we can draw that on. Uh, if that wasn't the case, then we'd get all sorts of paradoxes, like strings breaking in one frame but not another. So we can conclude that that tension has to exist in both frames, right? But from the perspective of someone who's sitting and co-rotating with that rotating frame, right, they would look at this and think, uh, well, there's a, a force acting inwards, so the object should be accelerating inwards, right? Because that's what Newton's second law tells us, tells us that the um, acceleration of an object is proportional to the force acting on it. So what that means is, because this person in the rotating frame doesn't see the object accelerating inwards, there has to be some kind of effective force opposing that tension force, right? And to oppose the tension force, it has to be pointing directly upwards. Okay, and so let's just label that as F, and that is exactly the centrifugal force. We can call it F subgroup C for centrifugal. The centrifugal force, you can think of it as basically this, this force effective force that you need in order to cancel out the the radial force which must be present to keep something in a circular orbit right if you didn't have this centrifugal force the person in the rotating frame would think that the uh, the object was accelerating radially inwards right so the centrifugal force is the term that kind of balances out this real force okay so that's one way of thinking of it another way of thinking of it is just by thinking about where the object is trying to go right so i've often seen people say that centrifugal force is it's about the inertia of an object and that's kind of what i'm what i'm getting at here right and so we can think about what the object wants to do right objects want to keep moving in a straight line right that's what newton's first law tells us basically so it's going 
from the perspective of the inertial frame, it's moving horizontally at this instant. And so if there were no uh, radial tension force, as I've drawn on here, then where would the object go after some time? Well, it would be somewhere over there after some time, right? It would move along that line. And where's it gone? Let me draw the line drawing up the center of that circle to that new point, right? And so if it was initially moving with an orbital radius of r, and we just kind of let go of it and let it do what it wants to do, move in a straight line, then sometime later we would find it at a distance capital R, which is bigger than the initial uh, radial distance small r that it was found at, right? And so that leads to another way of thinking about the centrifugal force, which is basically that objects want to be moving to higher radii, right? They want to be moving to higher radii because of their inertia, okay? So that's a couple of ways you can view this idea, like a couple of ways you can reason that you would expect an object from the perspective of a, of a rotating frame to be to be pushed outwards.